Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Anadonia. How are we doing baby? Because me, well, I'm doing brilliantly. Or as brilliantly as I can be considering, you know, it's me living my life. But yes, either way, welcome back. So, 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 so. Where we last left off, ah, that's it, that's it, so. Usually, my, or, well, I guess, my plan just period, not usually, but my plan, my plan since setting up the Void Miner was to start every single one of these episodes of Anadonia by upgrading it. However, unfortunately, there has not been enough time between this and the last episode for us to gather enough Chironite crystals in order to actually uh, build the next tier of Void Miner. So what we're going to do instead is today, since we're done building all of the trinkets, yes, we are done. Done building all of the trinkets. Uh, oh, hello. That's weird. Why is that missing its grass? That's so odd. Where did you go? Wait, what? I, I guess it's just a visual bug then. But where was I? Oh yeah, so since we finished all of the trinkets, we're going to move on to the next step of weaponry. Or I guess the next stage of weaponry. I don't know why I'm so bad at speaking my native language. And that next step, as I've just seen from pulling up my list here, is the Infinity series of weaponry. So the Infinity Nuke and the Infinity Hammer. So let's just have a look at what it takes to make an Infinity Hammer. To make an Infinity Hammer, we need a Disillusion Chamber, some pink slime, a lot of power, two blocks of diamond, a diamond sword, a diamond axe, an add-on range tier 12, and three golden gears. Let's make the Disillusion Chamber. Is what I would say if we didn't already have one over here from the last time we tried to do some of this. Now we have ether gas in here at the minute. It's empty, and I don't know how to unempty it, so I'm just gonna break it. Just looking at the list again, gold gears, diamond axe, diamond sword, diamond blocks, and add-on range. Let's get this bread, gamers. Okay, so I've just finished putting everything except for the add-on range inside of the dissolution chamber, and that's simply because I don't know what this is. I've never made one. Uh, and I, apparently we're about to start off by making the highest tier, which is pretty funny. But to make the add-on range, oh, it requires the dissolution chamber again, and latex. At least we've got latex. So to make the tier one, we need... Oh, thank God it doesn't have to be built up. It's just the material it's built out of. Okay, so we are going to have to take everything out of the dissolution chamber again. But this should be easy enough. Okay, that's the recipe that we're after. Now we've just got to put the latex in here. But unfortunately, I don't remember how to transfer the latex into the machine to my left. Oh, that did it. There we go. Latex in the machine. And with the latex in the machine, that should give us the add-on. I love to see it. Okay, and then if we set this to pull, brings all of the latex back in from this side, or at least it should. And of course, with the add-on now in hand, we are able to make ourselves the infinity hammer. But before we do that, we've got to fill this thing with pink slime. And would you look at what we have in the computer? An entire tank of pink slime. And then we can use these fluid pipes to pump into the system. All I've got to do, take the wrench from earlier, give it a little shift click, and that should start funneling into here. And with all of the pink slime funneled into here, it's just a matter of time until we get our hammer. There we go, infinity hammer. Current area, one by one by one, tier poor, power nothing, fluid nothing. Charging enabled, beheading zero. Don't know what any of that means. All I know is that for the highest tier of infinity hammer, it needs full power and full biofuel. So, let's find a charging station. But before we do that, just look at this beast of a creature. This beast of a creation. It is massive. Oh, uh, weirdest design I've ever seen. Not a pickaxe, though, which is interesting. It says one by one, so unless that means, uh, like, attacking area? Um, I'm not sure what this thing would be used to mine with. Or mine, just period. I suppose I could put this in here, can I? Ah. No, I cannot. Ah, there's a special charger. The Infinity Charger. And it seems easy enough to make. 
think. Oh, of course it requires an advanced machine frame. Are you kidding me? Well, at least the advanced machine frame is the only thing I don't have. Ah, uh, there we go. Advanced machine frame. Jesus Christ. We can now make ourselves the infinity charger. Now, the question is, do I want to plug this into the main circuit and siphon off nearly all of our excess power, or do I want to find another way to power this thing? Ooh, that was a big old chunk, and it's not recovering. That is zapping our energy fast. I can see why. What happens if our machines downstairs shut down? The containment on the wither goes down, but the wither should be dead. The charges and the processors go down. The mob farm goes down, but that's turned off anyway. Uh, these machines go down. The metallurgy confuser, solidification chamber, sawmill, coal generator, stuff like that. The multi servo press goes down. It's mainly just the more industrial parts of our ME storage drive farm that go down. Nothing life-threatening, since again, the wither is dead. We're no longer keeping one in containment, so we should be safe to let that thing just fill up. Right then, this needs 4 million for the next tier. This has only got half of that so far. And if I remember correctly, yeah, that's in the quintillions in terms of power. So... We're gonna be at this for a while. One thing I do think would really help in this scenario is just finding a way of generating a lot more power than we currently have. And while I'd love to get dug in and figure out why we're not generating this much power, or rather figure out what could generate us that much power, instead I'm gonna say, time to move on to the next weapon. Which, if you don't remember, is the Infinity Nuke, which requires 4 TNT, the add-on range tier plus 12, some ether gas, the block of diamond, and two nether stars. Now, I don't know about you, but I feel like handing Ruby something called an Infinity Nuke that has a max radius of 259 might be a bit of a bad idea. But, it will also be incredibly funny, so we're doing it. That does, however, mean we are going to have to capture another wither, which means we're actually going to have to unplug the charger that we've just set up, because this is producing latex, this is pink slime, and the infinity nuke needs ether gas, which you only get from having a wither contained. And obviously, if our containment field can't be powered because we're busy charging up our infinity hammer, the wither's gonna get out, and we're not gonna be able to harvest that ether gas. Right, so, the wither containment room. All of these do have power, though they are slowly draining. Then we've got the uh, fluid laser base and the laser drill, and the fluid laser base actually already has an a, a amount of ether gas in there. So maybe we got lucky here, and we don't need to trap another wither. Let me go grab a tank. Ah, that does work. We can siphon it off into here. There we go. Go. And there we have it, ladies, gentlemen, and all those in between and outside the Infinity Nuke. Now, this thing has zero power in it at the moment, which means that, technically speaking, it is safe. I don't know how wise it is to describe a nuclear device as safe, simply because it doesn't have any power in it, but that does mean I should be able to place it down and... That noise scared the crap out of me. Place it down, and as I was gonna say, prime it, without it risking, uh, without risking blowing it up. But let's just take that, shall we? Because I don't want to accidentally nuke my entire base. But, would you look at that? That's two out of three items done. We've got the infinity hammer, we've got the infinity nuke. Now, I know I could make two of these, one for me, one for Ruby, but I don't wanna. You saw how much effort it took just to make one infinity hammer. I really don't want to have to go through that again. I will, if he wants one, I'll ask him after I'm done recording for today. You know, I'll just be like, hey, Ruby, you want an infinity hammer, yay yeah or nay? And if he says yes, I'll make one off camera. And then if he says no, then we're good. The only thing left on my list of weapons that we need to make is an unobtainium cleaver. If we type in unobtainium
unobtainium. This is all we have left to make. And to make it, it's obviously just your regular cleaver, but made of unobtainium. Now this I do have to make two of, okay? Because I have to have one, Ruby has to have one. So let's see how much of unobtainium that's going to actually cost. That's odd. There doesn't appear to be an option for a cleaver in here. How do we make a cleaver? Not going to tell me? Great. Love that. Thank you so much. You're such a useful guidebook. We've probably already got one of these, but let's try a Tinker's Station. Yeah, ah, uh, yeah, there we go. Tinker's Station. Already got one. Really irritating, that is. Really irritating. I swear there used to be a third one with metal legs. Why can I not remember this? Well, that's interesting. I, I was correct in saying that there was supposed to be a third one. It's meant to be the Tool Forge. But quite interestingly, if I type in Tool Forge into NEI, it doesn't appear to exist. Okay, well, I've just pulled up a troubleshooting guide. Apparently, there's a chance I could still craft it despite it not showing up in JEI. And I need, uh, what's the recipe? Three seared bricks and four metal on either side. Seared brick along the top. Iron, we have an uh, infinite amount of iron. Ah, Tinker Station, but I put it in my trash slot. Who'd have guessed? Can we? Oh, no, we can't. No! The final suggestion on the troubleshooting page is that it's the Tinker's Anvil. There we go, Tinker's Anvil. Oh! It is the Tinker's Anvil. Either way, good news is we can now make ourselves the cleaver. So, we need, looking at this, this slanty one, this slanty one, a blade, and the creeper face. Which is really descriptive, I know, shut up. Two tough handles, broad plate, and a large plate. Would cost me 18 unobtainium, if I'm reading that correctly, for each individual cleaver. Uh... How much unobtainium do we currently have? One. Right. Ha. <laughs> oh, no. Well, isn't that interesting? We've run out of things that we can do in a short amount of time. And we're barely into today's episode at all. We've made ourselves the Infinity Hammer and the Infinity Nuke. And we have the Infinity Charger so that we can charge these up. But the thing is, we don't have enough power which we can't fi fix without upgrading our power system, which is going to take a long time. And we can't make the final weapon that I've got planned, because it would require me to go and get 20, 30, 36 more unobtainium, 35 more unobtainium technically, in order to make the double cleaver that we're going to need. And I can't even go down into the sub-basement of the crystal miner to pull out all of the crystals to make the next tier up from the crystal miner that we've currently got the Karenite one, because... Again, that one is just waiting around until we have enough crystals. So from the looks of it, I'm kind of just stuck until I pick a path. And considering we're the closest to finishing this path, I say we just go and get that unobtainium. Because we have the resources needed to make unobtainium site. We can make unobtainium powder by crushing down the last unobtainium ingot that we've got. We can then calcinate it uh, by smelting it, and then we can turn it into three potions. Hopefully that'll be enough for us to get at least one more piece of unobtainium so that we can keep repeating the cycle. But this is gonna take me ages. But you know what they say, the time will pass anyway, so let's just do it. All of this space. I have just finished clearing all of this space. And you want to know how much unobtainium I got from that? After how long have I been doing this? Five hours. I've been doing this for five hours. You know how many things I got from clearing out all of that space? 22. Clearing all of that space got me 22 obtainium. I, sh I need 36. So even though... I've cleared all of this space. I've still got to clear more. But you know what? Before I do that, because I'm absolutely shattered from just sitting here 
I'm mindlessly breaking blocks. I'm just gonna go and make one of the cleavers, and I will join you back in the shack. Woo! Why is this taking so long to smell? Is it a server issue, is there, or is there not enough room? Oh, 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 there we go. Oh, molten and obtainium, eight ingots and four blocks. Jesus Christ, right. Let's put the gold at the bottom, because we need to actually make the patterns now. There we go. And then fill it with gold. Brilliant. Right then, now that we've got that, we can switch on over to the unobtainium. And we need four of these. So one. Thank you. Give me that. One. Brilliant. Right then, we only need two of these. And from the looks of it, we're still doing all right on the unobtainium. Not to jinx it, but it's looking like I actually might have gotten enough. Oh, wait, that's why I quote-unquote got enough. It doubles it. When you put it in the smeltery, it doubles it. How did I forget that? That is the most basic thing that you'd, like, learn about smelteries. Ah, uh, I'm stupid, but I'm also brilliant. So, you know, don't deny me this. And give me number two. Sorted. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Right then. We can put the large plate cast away. The last thing we need for the cleaver is the uh, broad blade. That's it. That's this one here. Let's make a cast. There we go. Switch on back over to the unobtainium. Brilliant. Blade number one is sorted now time for the final piece and sources let's chuck all of these in here Ugh, come on split properly there we go here's cleaver one and here's cleaver two we did it we have made ourselves unobtainium cleavers each cleaver doing 450 45 attack damage with a 60 attack speed combine that with our charm that also basically doubles our attack speed uh, which is the wind force gauntlets we can basically just attack as much as we want as many times as we want but 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 oh my god that's massive there's one thing i want to do before I finish for today. I'm not into the episode like I'm just running out of time today for me personally. And that is I want to make these things as sharp as possible because the brilliant thing about Tinker's Construct is that you can upgrade your tools to make them better. And I want to know what the best possible possible upgrades are. Okay, so looking at this redstone equals speed. Redstone doesn't really do anything for us because I mean we've got infinite speed. What does quartz do? I remember quartz used to be a really big thing. What does quartz do? Quartz makes it sharper. Quartz is what upgrades the damage. Okay, so if we just get a ton of nether quartz, so an entire stack of block of quartz gives us an extra point of damage? Is that it? Not bad, not bad, not bad. Give me that. Oh wait, no, that was just several blocks of it. I can just... Can I just keep doing this? I can just keep doing this. I can only do it twice, never mind. Let's double this round here. There we go. Brilliant weapons right there. Brilliant weapons pushed to the absolute maximum that I know how to make. I am very happy with this result. So I'm going to keep my thang on me, and then I'm going to take rubies down into the ruby hole. And I'll put that in the chest right there. This is currently the full extent of our power system. And don't get me wrong, it's brilliant. It is all we need to run the machines we've got. And we've plugged more machines into it since, and we have had zero issues. In fact, the only time we're having issues with it is when it's no longer day out, because you know, they're solar panels. And then obviously over here, we have the second circuit dedicated entirely to the ME storage system. Uh, quite a lot of solar panels here, quite a lot of solar panels there, and like I mentioned, we're good. These things are fine, but if we want to charge up our Infinity Nuke and our Infinity Hammer, we're going to need more than just Tier 6 solar panels. Because they're effective, don't get me wrong. But they're not the most effective. You see, if I just sleep and then check the solar panel, at 100% light level, this thing is gradually ticking up, tick, 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 uh, we get... Uh, I think it's about 2.3 thousand FE per tick. I could just uh, Google it now that I uh, think about it, or I guess J-E-I it. 2,048 FE per tick, which is fine. Not great, but it's all we need for our, for our current setup. 
Uh, and the maximum strength is 32,000 per tick, which again, really good. But there's a mod in this mod pack called Power. And from what I can tell, this is probably gonna be the best way for us to get a insane amount of power very quickly. And in order to do that, we're gonna need uh, these reactor blocks here. We're gonna need quite a few of them. And to make them, we need uranite, nitro capacitors, and a dielectric casing. Now, uranite, uh, we can get it from uranite essence if we go the mystical agriculture route, or we can just get it from mining pure uranite from the ground and smelting it. Yeah, there we go. See, the poor is worth one, the dense is worth four, uh, and just regular raw uranite is worth two. But the nitro capacitors are gonna require nitro crystals, dielectric paste, and a base capacitor large. And the nitro crystals come from energizing a nether star, two blocks of redstone, and a block of blazing crystal. And that gives us 16, which is quite impressive. Now, we have infinite amounts of all of these except the block of blazing crystal. And the block of blazing crystal comes from nine blazing crystals, and those blazing crystals come from energizing blaze rods with quite a bit of power. So quite obviously, the very first thing we're gonna need to craft in order to energize these things is an energizing orb and an energizing rod. Now the energizing orb, pretty simple, just some glass, the dielectric casing, and some dielectric rods. So I say we get on to crafting this. We actually have dielectric paste in here already. I have no idea what we used that for. But from the looks of it, we actually have quite a bit of uranite already in the system, which is good to see. To make the dielectric rod, we need the paste and iron bars, which is simple enough. Just give us those, there we go. And to make the casing, it's just the rods, and some iron ingots. And the only ones we don't have is the vertical rods, which you get from either crafting vertical rods or just putting horizontal ones in a crafting bench. Let's just craft eight vertical, simply because we have the resources for that. And boom, there's our casing. And boom, there's our energizing orb. So, let's take this down into the machine room. And I would say let's put it down, but we're actually running out of quite a bit of space. We, we don't have much space left for us. Well, I could put it in here. I don't quite like the idea of putting technology that isn't this in this room. It, it just feels wrong, and I know it's a waste of space, but I don't know, I just, I just don't like it personally. I don't like the idea of it. So, I say we start utilizing this space a little more than we already are. If we can push back Oh, it's an uneven, it's an uneven thing. Uh, I guess if we open this part here, I think this could work. Right then, let's just build ourselves a mini workroom for now, shall we? Okay, this will do for now. We can decorate it later. Uh, so let's put the energizing orb down here. I don't think this thing needs power. I could be wrong, I don't think it does. Uh, but the next thing we need that I know needs power are these things here, energizing rods. Now, the energizing rods uh, can output uh, a lot more power the higher the tier. And they can also store a lot more power, but to make them you need capacitors anyway. Which means that technically speaking, you can't actually use any of the advanced capacitors until you have uh, the materials needed. So for example, for the nitro one, I would need nitro capacitors already along with the previous tier. In order to make the spirited one, I'd need spirited capacitors, which would need spirited crystals, which again comes from the energizing process. To make the niotic one, I would need niotic crystals, which again, comes from the energizing process. So from the looks of it, the only one that we can craft right now is the very basic energizing rod. It doesn't have to be the starter one, but we, we, I mean, we do need the starter one, but we can only get the basic one. That's the highest tier we can get. There we go, that's the energizing rod starter. And then if we upgrade it to the basic one, we just need another dielectric casing, which requires a couple more dielectric rods. There we go, make the basic rod. Brilliant, and from the looks of it, that's interesting. The basic one does have an EMC value. You love to see it, okay. Energizing rod. Now, 
I don't know how many of these you can use on one of these energizing orbs. Let me just quickly Google it. Okay, well, funny story. The only answer I found to that was that there is no right answer and that you can basically use as many as you want. I don't trust that for a second, but since no one is stopping me, I'm gonna take... Well, I was I was gonna say I'm gonna take full advantage of that, but let's be honest, I'm, I'm, I'm too much of a coward to go all out with them, because I know for a fact that with my luck, they would end up being wasted. Uh, but anyway, we need to run cabling all the way here. We need power cabling plugged into these rods, or rather, we need to plug the rods into the power cabling. So, let's find a way to bring power into here. It's a little scuffed, but this should be all right to pump power through. I mean, we already have a cabling over here. Right then, and with this cabling sorted, let's just quickly pave over that so we don't have to keep jumping. Uh, it, we should just be able to plug these into the cable. There we go. Looks a little scuffed, but it's there, and it is draining power. It is draining a lot of power. Hopefully, it doesn't tax the system. But they look okay. So if we, just to test this, if we grab some blaze rods, we don't have any blaze rods in the computer system. Okay, if we grab, what is it it needed to energize for the nitric? It was um, a nether star, redstone, and oh, blazing crystals, so we need the... Blaze rods anyway. Okay. So if we just put these in here, slow going, 90,000 to charge one of these? Jesus Christ. It's it's slow going, but it is going. So we need nine blazing crystals in order to make a block of uh, blazing crystal. And one block of blazing crystal will give us 16 nitro crystals. And 16 nitro crystals will give us four nitro capacitors. One block of blazing crystal will give us four reactor blocks. But I know we need more than that. I think it's 36 to make a reactor. And if one block gets us four, four, eight, 12, 16, 24, 28, 32, 36. We need eight sets of this crafting recipe which means we need a certain amount of these. I don't know, I'm not, good at, I'm not good at math. All I know is that we need a ton of these blazing crystals. So I say, let's just get them. Or actually, you know what, hang on. I think there might be a really easy way to automate this. Give me a second. It's a bit scuffed, but logically speaking, this should work. All we've got to do, we've got to add the filter down here for the blazing crystal, add the filter up here for the blazing crystal, and then we should just be able to put the blaze rods in here. They drop into the energizing thing, and this thing should start blasting them. I'm not sure why it's not. Oh, it can hold multiple, but it can only do one at a time. Okay. So I can set this up the way it was meant to be designed. Okay, so it's a bit of an odd fix, but I've come up with a fix for this issue. The issue is that even when it's set to one, this thing doesn't stop feeding it, and this doesn't stop letting things through uh, if there's something to feed. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna turn off the chute. We're not gonna let anything through at all, except for this one. And we're gonna put the rest of these blaze rods back in our inventory. What we're gonna do, this takes how many seconds to complete? We're gonna count them out, full Mississippis. Takes 20 seconds. So if we set this to pulse every 21 seconds, and we provide this thing with power, every 21 seconds it will pulse. Ah, uh, but you see, that just permanently turns it off for another 21 seconds. Okay, so what if we get just a regular powered latch instead of a toggle latch? When it receives power, it flicks on. When it doesn't receive power, it flicks off. So if we watch this pulse, this pulse shouldn't turn it off. What we can do if we get a second adjustable pulse repeater. Oh no, because the towers are in the way. Let's move the whole system back. Bam, 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 bam. After 20 seconds, this will pulse. After 21 seconds, this will pulse. The 20 seconds will lock it. The 21, uh, or sorry, the 20 seconds will unlock it. Lock it? Unlock it? No. Should it be the other way? It needs to be off first. 
Or does it need? No, it needs to be on. No, it needs to be the other way around. That needs to be 21. This needs to be 20. Pulse off, pulse on. So if we watch this now, we could set the pulse up differently. Switch the latches around like this. Unlock every 20 seconds. And then if we put the redstone here and a redstone torch here, bam. Why did that one not fire? Or did it fire? Oh no, it can't be a constant thing. The redstone itself, the torch has to be flicking on and off as well. And then these, these have got to be repeaters as well. Redstone, redstone, redstone. So if I flick this system, it turns on pulses, turns off pulses or not. Why did you not pulse back the other way? All right, flick on, powers, pulses one, pulses two, flicks off, pulses one, pulses two, flicks off, good. So, we've got this part of the machine down. Shut it down for now. Take the rods out of here. Take all of the rods out of here. Let it start based on its own timer. Good. Not good. Why did you flick on and off that way? Why are you off now? Why is it skipping over the input? This pulse should turn it off and on again. Oh, it did. Just not fast enough. It's gotta be in the same pulse. Oh, that is brilliant. <laughs> oh, there we go. This is now automating itself. So let's watch this tick over to 100%. What? It sent one through anyway. Are you kidding me? It sent one through anyway. Are you kidding me? How? What? It was locked. It was locked. I'm not having that. I am not having that. It's locked and it puts it through anyway. That's actually such a piss take. Okay. I don't get it. I don't get it. You're locked. Why are you letting things through when you're locked? I decided to decorate the room a little bit. Uh, I ran the cabling under the floor. Um, it works. The system works. Uh, it's frozen for some reason. It's not letting one of the last uh, blaze crystals out. Uh, but I'm just going to take that myself, and it should just be working now, which is good. Uh, and that gave us 63 blazing crystals. No idea where the 64th went. Uh, it's a mystery that is forever lost to time. Uh, but now that we have the blazing crystals, we can continue on with what we were doing. <laughs> if I can remember what we were doing, because it has been a substantial amount of time. There we go, that gives us seven blocks of blazing crystal. And now if we type in... Uh, at power. That's it. We were making nitro crystals, which requires the block of blazing crystals, the blocks of redstone, and the nether star. So we need 14 blocks of redstone and 7 nether stars. I guess we have to put all 4 in at once. 7, 7, 7, 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. No? No? Then how does that work? Can I only do it one at a time? One, two, three, and four? Oh, you can only do it one at a time. Ah, that makes sense. 20 million? 20 million for one of these? This is gonna take a while. Okay, so while I wait for that to charge, because it's gonna take another 20 or so minutes, to finish on its current level of charging, because I added a couple more of these energizing rods to it, I want to make something that I nearly completely forgot about again, uh, that's going to be part of our arsenal, and that's called an Archangel Ring. I have wanted one of these for ages now, and I just never got around to making one, so I'm going to make two now, one for me and one for Ruby, and then we're going to add it to our arsenal. Oh, and we're missing the metal band, hang on. We need two buckets of lava. It's a good job we have infinite amounts of that. And there we go, one and two. Now this does eat into your EMC reserves. Thankfully, just like always, my Klein Star, I have not needed to recharge once since getting it. Uh, but all this does is it basically allows us to spam arrows the way you used to be able to with the Alpha Minecraft bows. Check this out.
which would be really helpful with that relic that increased the amount of arrow damage you do. Uh, but because I forgot that I wanted to make this, it's not really something I considered. But yeah, while we wait for that thing to charge, I'm just going to go put this downstairs with the rest of the arsenal we're building up. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Moving on from 99% to 100%, we have 16 nitro crystals. I actually did the math uh, while I was waiting for this thing to, you know, tick on over. And... Each one of these, with our current setup, takes 55 minutes and 33 seconds in order to complete. So when I say we need an upgrade, I mean it. But now that we have the Nitro Crystals, we can actually take our first step towards making some of the Nitro Reactors. We've got to turn these crystals into capacitors, and we do that using dielectric paste, so we've got to make quite a bit more of this. And of course, we also need the basic capacitor large, which is two regular basic capacitors. Let's just chuck those up there. So putting that all together, and we have ourselves two nitro capacitors. What are we missing? Oh yeah, more basic capacitors. So let's grab these. There we go. Just grab a bunch of these. And then we put them together to make the large ones. Throw them up there. And then we can make even more of the nitro capacitors. Run out of crystals now, but that's fine. One batch, a single one of those things that takes 55 minutes and 33 seconds is enough for one set of reactors and of course we need uranite so let's just take all of this raw uranite here and let's bulk blast it upstairs there we go with all of that put together we now have the first four parts of our reactor casing and i think i know exactly where i want to put it now one thing i learned when it comes to this mod that i think is absolutely brilliant is you can use these ender gates to transfer power now they can only transfer 200,000 per tick which is actually pretty good when you think about it. But using these ender gates, we might be able to make it so that our shield projectors are actually viable. Because as you might know, if you've been keeping up, the shield projectors we have at the minute just aren't viable because you switch them on and they're instantly out of power. They drain the solar panels nearly instantly. But if we can supply them with a permanent supply of 200,000 per tick, that's 200,000 times 15, because there's 15 ticks in a, in a, in a full second. So if we grab a calculator real quick, that's 3 million power per second. And daddy like he's that number. But if we just take the linked controller very quick, let's open these doors up here. We've got all of this empty space that leads to nothing. I was going to turn it into a corridor, but I just... Do you mind? I just completely forgot about it and just didn't end up using it. But here, this is where we can build our reactor. Oh, but it's uneven. Oh, come on, why do you have to be uneven? Well, we could always just start running them along the side, because, I mean, who says we have to stop at one reactor? But still. Ah, uh, well, let's at least light this place up ready and, uh, so it's ready and waiting to be used, shall we? Hang on. There we go. This place is ready and waiting to be used now, just like your mom. So let's close it on up. There we go. But, yeah, that's step one, or I guess part one of our plan uh sorted and done for we have the first four parts of our reactor just uh 32 left to go uh which means 4 8 12 16 24 28 32 i'm gonna need seven more sets of these each one's an hour that's seven hours so i might upgrade these in the meantime but that's me done for tonight i will lock back on in a couple of days then we can move on to finishing the generator. And I'm back. It's been a couple of days uh, since I last left off, uh, but you've caught me as I'm energizing uh, some emeralds because the highest tier of energizing rod we can make right now is the spirited one. And for spirited energizing rods, it's just an emerald. And it's only a million effie, which still sounds like a lot, but compared to the 20 million effie that is needed for the jump, from spirited to nitro, it is going to be so much faster to just charge the emeralds. So we're gonna charge a bunch of these up, we're gonna replace these rods, and then I'll get back to you once we're done with that. Christ, it took eight emeralds, that's eight million power, just to get two spirited capacitors. And you need two spirited capacitors just for simply one energizing rod. So let's make another one of these dielectric casings. Let's pop that up here when it 
decides that it wants to do that for us. There we go. And then we also need a niotic energizing rod, which needs niotic capacitors, which is going to need eight diamonds. Great. Okay. Oh, I can see. I can see how this is going to go. Okay. And it took a little while, but I went back through the line of progression, and now I have myself a hardened energizing rod. Giggity. Then we can upgrade that to a blazing rod. Let's drop the blazing one in there. Then we can upgrade that to niotic. And then if I throw the niotic rod in there, I can finally make the spirited one by once again just making another bit of dielectric casing. Now at this point, I might as well just upgrade it to nitro. Uh, but I'm not going to, just because obviously that would require me to waste more of these blocks of blazing crystals. But it took all of that for one spirited rod. Uh, and it doesn't have any MC value. So, I'm gonna make some more. It's probably gonna take me about as much time as I've got left for today. Uh, so, I'll either come back to you when I'm done, and I'll be very tired. Or you'll be seeing me tomorrow. In, you know, like five minutes. Time dilation is a very funky thing. I changed the room layout and I got rid of most of the automation stuff because it turns out it kind of sucked. I've also done a couple of upgradings of these pylons uh, in between uh, when you last saw me and now. So we've got one, two, three, four spirited ones uh, and a couple of these. And then I actually built a second one over here with just completely uh, basic energizing rods. Yeah, I said I'd come back to you when I had all of the reactor nitro things. And I don't. I'm missing four. But I have the four nitro capacitors here and 32 spare crystals from uh, what I was doing over here. So what we're going to do, we're going to put the last of the reactor blocks together. And we're going to, you know, build the reactor. And there we have it. 36 reactor nitro blocks. Right, so let's put it on down. And it should automatically build itself, which is good. We now have our nitro reactor. So, clicking on this opens up uh, the UI here. And we have input and output uh, selection tools, which is good. Redstone toggleability features, fluid, power, and auto mode. I don't remember how this works, but it looks like it needs uranite. And I know for a fact it needs an infinite water source. So, let's set up an infinite water source tank. All right, then let's put the ender tank on here. It's already filling with lava. That's no bueno. Let's get the magenta dye to dye the rungs. One, two, three. There we go. So there's nothing inside of here now. We've got to make it one higher. And I forgot about that because I'm kind of stupid. There we go. Fluid pipe. There we go. Then let's grab the wrench that will allow us to change the direction of this thing. So yeah, there we go. Pipe wrench. And shift click. Good. That should now be... Uh, inputting any fluids that go into the tank into the uh, reactor. I should just be able to put this here, twist it with the wrench, and then I can use my Evertide amulet to just fire water into here to make it an infinite water source. And then I should be able to bring this down here. Why did this stop? Why did it stop? Why did it stop? I'm sorry? Excuse me? You're a heat generator. You don't stop. Hello? Interesting. You're not even overstressed. I need to know why this stopped moving. What changed? The heat's still there. The redstone's still there. Right? Right? Wrong? The f- Where'd the lava go? Okay. I- I, I, I guess the lava just left. I guess that's just a thing it can do now, I suppose. I don't know why I'm so baffled by this. More has happened before. This is just extremely strange bull. Now it's overstressed, but that's just because of this stupid pump. Okay, well, this thing has definitely got enough coolant in it now, or at least it's finally starting to be filled with coolant. The next step should be probably be to look at the instruction manual. Not to imply that I'm not absolutely brilliant and can't do it without looking at the book, but I feel like now that we have a nuclear reactor directly under the heart of our industrial uh, district, we might want to know how to use it without risking uh, a very, very, very cold winter. Right then, so let's just have a look at the instruction manual. When generating energy, the reactor heats up, causing it to consume fuel faster and generating less Fe per tick. So you need to cool it down using a coolant like water. Also, you can use a solid coolant like snow or ice for extra coldness. Solid coolant requires liquid coolant to work. Keep the reactor buffer full of fuel for better production. Okay. Carbon materials like coal and wood will improve the fuel efficiency and will add 180 degrees of heat, or s Celsius, or centigrade of heat. Redstone will speed up the production and the fuel consumption and will add another 120 of heat. The reactor will stop 
when it's full and start when it has less than 70% of energy if it's on auto mode. The uranite is what it reacts with. Okay, so we need an input for snow, coal, redstone, and uranite. We can automate all of this except one, and even then we can still automate the uranite. It's just re it's just gonna require more plants. We are literally about to start growing radioactive plants. There has gotta be a joke in there somewhere. But first, that's the condenser setup. This one with redstone, this one with snow, and the last one we need to set up is obviously the one with coal. And I think I might end up having to filter the actual uranite in through the back because as it stands right now this reactor has all of its ports used except for this uh well i guess that back one there but i've just had the thought that maybe i can double up on the okay that maybe i can double up the condensers on this side by having them pipe in through the same line right well the snow is going in the coal is certainly taking its time though and the redstone doesn't appear to be going in at all but from the looks of it that's because it hasn't actually started producing any yet uh, so I'm gonna grab some glowstone, and that should max out the energy condensers. Although, why this one isn't doing anything is beyond me. Where the hell did the Mobius fuel come from? There we go. Now it's getting fed in. Very, very slowly, but it looks like... Is the redstone overtaking? I can't tell. Maybe it is, who knows. But the important part is, we've got all three of these inputs set up, as well as the coolant. So now we just need the uranite. But obviously, we don't have an infinite supply of that yet. Now, in order to get uranite, you can obviously smelt up raw uranite like you would any other ore. Or, no pun intended, you can craft it using uranite essence. And to make uranite essence, you need uranite seeds, which are a tier 5 uh, mystical agriculture seed, which in order to get is going to require 4 uranite, 4 supremium, and a prosperity seed base. Now, we have prosperity seeds, or rather, we usually have prosperity seeds. There we go, we've got a prosperity seed base. And we have the four uranite. And it's at this point that any other normal person might think, oh no, how are you gonna get the supremium? Well, let's not forget about our little power flower tower power flower. And look in this chest here, we have quite a lot of supremium essence. I decided to go with the option where I just make an entirely another one of these. Uh, there's only one seed in here right now, and it's this little guy right here. Um, and he's growing quite well. Uh, but I've decided that instead of running another one of these tracks all the way over to the Power Flower Tower Power Flower Tower, uh, and instead I'm just going to use an ME import bus to import it into the ME system and then outport it uh, into a crafting station over there. Sort of like wireless transmission of items. But in order to do that, I need an ME import bus connected to the system. And in order to do that, I have to run ME cabling over here anyway. You know, the whole thing, I built the infinite range wireless card to avoid doing. Oh well, no time like the present. Okay, so it took a minute, but I finally led the Fluix cables, the ME cables, all the way over to the farm area. As you can see, we might actually be in need of two import buses, but that's not important right now. What is important right now is that we need one ME import bus. I know we made one a while ago, uh, but it's not in the computer anymore, which means we did actually just use it, period. So we're gonna have to make another one, or I guess another two. Here we go, let's put the import bus here. And then uh, we shouldn't have to put anything in here. Although we could use those spare acceleration cards that we had left over from when we were uh, making them for the, 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 uh, inscribers. So, uh, yeah, let's throw those up there. There we go. Then all we need is a barrel. Another right barrel will do. Put that there. Then all we have to do is get this thing turning, which we can do by plugging it into the conveyor belt system over there. Well, you know what? Better yet, we don't even need to do that. We can just use water wheels because this doesn't have to be fast. Well, it does have to be fast. It has to be a certain speed, but it doesn't have to be fast fast. Then we just grab two of these funnels. We put one here. We put one here. And the next time it connects, it should pull an item out. Hopefully. Oh, I didn't give it an inventory! And then, logically speaking, if I put this on the conveyor belt, it should go into here, and then into the ME system. Because let me tell you something, it's not staying in here, which means it has to be going into the ME system. If we type in essence, 181, 183, there we go, it went up. 
which means this system is working. This just has to be faster, and this needs to be plugged in. Now that I've just quickly set this bit up, the last thing I've got to do is, like I mentioned, uh, speed this along, because as it's going at the moment, it's too slow to extract all of the items it needs. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get some shafts from out of the terminal, I'm going to connect these up in the middle using water wheels, and then I'm going to get a speed controller. Okay, it took a bit, but we do now have a very fast and very automated system to start plugging things into the ME network. Let me just quickly grab those other speed upgrades from in here. There we go, to put them into here, because this is not going fast enough. And would you look at that? Things are disappearing faster than they can be put in. This whole thing is now going back into the ME system. Let me just grab uh, my uh, magnet. There it is. Let me just grab my magnet to suck up all of the excess that isn't going to get put in there because it wasn't in the chests. And then I can just drop it onto the conveyor belt. There we go. Should have done this ages ago, really, but at least it's at, at least it's done now. Um, so yeah, let's just check in the wireless terminal. Here we go. We've already got 438 uranite essence. Sadly, it hasn't given us another uranite seed yet, uh, but it is only a 5% chance drop, so I'm not too worried about that. But the next step of all of this is to set it up so that the Uranite actually gets self-crafted. And I'm actually going to do it down here in the underground sub-basement laboratory thing, if only just to give us a reason to use it. Okay, so it's taken a moment, but from the looks of it, we should nearly be done setting up this uh, system. All we're going to need, well, first of all, we're going to need a way out of here, but all we're going to need is to set up the final uh, export bus, which should, uh, export into the back of this thing, and we should have an automated system that feeds this thing uranite, as it currently is. Uh, look at it. It's, it's, it's full on uranite, it's got all, it's got a hell of a lot of uh, temperature, but it's also got a lot of good coolant, and it's got a lot of extra coolant, and, uh, it currently has 80 million FE stored within it. So we need to desperately plug this thing into our actual um, power grid. So let's finish setting this up, then we can plug it in, and then I think we'll be finished for today's episode. All we've got to do is plug it into the back. Unfortunately, because the way I've designed this, it's not going to be symmetrical unless... Hmm... Let's try something. There we go, absolutely brilliant. It looks a little weird, but it works. So all we've got to do now, we plug the export bus into here. We put inside of the export bus the raw uranite, or rather not raw uranite, but the uranite essence. And then we can just knock a hole through this back wall here and plug in the cabling. Ha <laughs> ha! There we go, it's working. I just didn't wait long enough. Oh, that is brilliant. And the moment it goes on here, it gets taken back into the ME system. And then the moment this is free, more essence gets plugged in. Oh, this is brilliant. I love it. Okay, right then. Time to plug the reactor in. All I've got to do, I've got to plug it into here, and then I can drill this up through the, uh, through the roof and plug it into the main power supply for the base. Hopefully there's nothing directly above me right now. And where do we end up? Ah... That's pretty good. And there we go. It is plugged in to the system. So, since we have the reactor now, in the next episode, I think we'll work on storing all of the energy it produces because while it's daytime outside, this thing is just wasting power. What I'm gonna do in the next episode is I'm gonna start making some of these, uh, where are they? The energy cells to store power in. Either way, if you did enjoy this episode of Anadonia, make sure to leave a like. If you want to say something about what I've done in this episode of Anadonia, leave a comment. And if you want to see more Anadonia in the future, hit subscribe. But yes, from me, the Drifter, and from the rest of the Outcast Studios family, I bid you adieu. I will see you in the next one. Or, I guess, in case I don't see you, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and good night. See you in the next one, guys. Bye-bye!